I can pretty much tell you what's at every mile marker on, on 95 between Richmond and Darlington. And, uh, somebody will say mile marker 143 and I'll say Garrisonville. <laughs> 118, that's Thornburg. <laughs> Those trips back and forth to Richmond did become very familiar. <laughs> It was sometimes hard to hear from Mary Margaret, well, this is the way we do it in Arlington, and the Arlington way on everything. The problem was that from a both democratic performance basis and from a good government basis, it was hard to be, uh, not say, hey, Arlington pretty much gets it right. We're very small, we're only 26 square miles. We're the smallest self-governing county in the country. Uh, in geography, but we're very densely populated. And what it means is that you've got a very active population. It's a very participatory process, and she got hooked. She, the first time she ran, it was in one of these very tough years. She was going to be running against uh, people who were incumbents and we knew it was gonna be a very difficult year and so we needed a high prof profile candidate and she was willing to do it. And that certainly, um, I mean, we, we all knew it was gonna to be tough and the first time she lost. I think in that first race, I was a little too willing to go along with the ideas that other people had even when I had some doubts about them. And what I learned was, I think my instincts were better than I had given myself credit for. Then she had the opportunity to run uh, in 1982 and, and won, and her victory switched the majority on the county board from Republican to Democrat. We watched the first debate that she had against her opponent. He was getting very flustered by her competence, I think, and her ability to really handle these questions. This what seemed to be a very difficult campaign running against this seemingly popular opponent um, that she could really take him on. You know, she's interesting to me because she is sort of a complete woman. She's very feminine. She's very fo family focused. She's really good at bringing people together, but she's steely. When she knows she's right, she goes after whatever it is, and she doesn't back down. And that's a really unusual and valuable characteristic. State Senator Ed Hollins uh, announced that uh, he was not going to run for re-election. And there was a fair amount of, of interest expressed by other people in this. And uh, from my, I, I was not, I, I don't remember anyhow any much discussion with Mary Margaret, but she said, okay, I'm going to run. I think the horizon broadened. Uh, she had an opportunity to get into more kinds of things. She could affect more environmental issues, for example. Uh, you can't, as a county board member, really do much about Chesapeake Bay, but you sure can as a state senator. On page three of the calendar, Senate Bill 972, the senator from Arlington, Senator Whipple. She was really able to uh, talk to other legislators about the concerns of the cities and counties throughout Virginia because she understood what local boards um, had to do and what their issues were. And, uh, this would raise the eligibility for children in the famous program from 200% of poverty to 225% of poverty. One thing that is rare down here in the General Assembly is somebody who's a true consensus builder. And she has been that, uh, and that showed up especially at when she was caucus chair. She's the first woman to be our caucus, Democratic caucus chair. And she was able to um, pull us all together, and that's really not easy to do. 
things. I remember one time, both at the mansion and one time in the governor's conference room, where it was Mary Margaret's voice uh, that helped keep the Senate Democrats uh, kind of marching together. But she always did it with a grace and a style. Nobody would ever say she wasn't a fervent Democrat, but she always treated people with enormous respect, uh, even folks who completely disagreed with her. She's the author of too many programs to mention. Wetlands, water quality, BMPs, member of the Chesapeake Bay, so forth and so on, all of which are involved in the greater good. The Senator from Arlington, I would argue, is one of the very few people who absolutely rises above that every day. And in doing so, she's lifted us. She's made us all better servants. Uh, Mary Margaret will certainly be missed, but I say to you that the legacy that you have left behind has left an imprint on this institution that we call the Senate of Virginia. It's a little bittersweet to pack up your office, some place that you've spent many years of your working life, and all of a sudden all the pictures are coming off the walls and the files are coming out. And I do take pride in, in what I've done, first with the schools and then in, in my local community. But to be able to make a difference at the, at the state level uh, is uh, gratifying. I do know at the very least I did the best I could. Senator, on behalf of the 8 million people that call Virginia home, let me just thank you for your service to the people of Virginia.